Okay, we'll try this again. This is just a quick uh, two minute update, letting you know what's going on here at court. Great morning so far. Uh, let's see, four attorneys have gone. Let's see, we had Ryan. Nope, I'm sorry, three attorneys. Ryan, Harris, and Olson. So Harris uh, represents Shauna Cox, and then um, Olson represents David Fry. So Ryan started out the day, he did awesome. He connected with the jury, uh, he, was, uh, he was real, he was, he was Bundy strong as we call it. And he did great, um, I'll post notes later. I wasn't here for Ryan's closing arguments, but I was here for Shauna's and David Fry's. Um, Shauna's attorney and David Fry's attorney did okay. Um, in my opinion, they weren't overly believable but uh, it could just be that they were nervous. Um, they, said, they said good things and it's in God's hands. So let's see what else. Now we come back in and we have Schindler left, who will be awesome because he just kills it every time. And he believes in the cause. So uh, we have Schindler and then we have Neil Wampler's attorney and who, who else? We have one more. Why am I? Oh, Jeff Banta's attorney. So, um, good day so far. Not not a huge update. Uh, courtroom's packed. Lots of reporters here, and um, everything's gone pretty well except for Ryan not being able to read the United States Constitution. He wanted to read um, the part that talks about. I can't even remember right now, actually. So I am not looking at my notes, but um, she refused to let him read it directly. Uh, first, he wanted to put a slide up of the Constitution um, and, and read from that, and they objected. And then he wanted to read directly from the Constitution, and they objected, which is kind of confusing because Mumford did have um, the property clause up yesterday, and he spoke on that. So I'm not really sure what the difference is other than Ryan's representing himself, and they feel like they can push him around. But uh, it's a good day, and let's switch over here. Oh, we've got a couple special guests here today, again. So, um, live streaming, John, live streaming. Uh, Ryan Bundy took the stand this morning. He uh, All right, I'm going to head back in. Truth is being told, so that's what's important. And um, prosecution, I guess, is actually going to wrap up and only be going for about an hour at the end of all of this, which is really good and we will uh, do an update and let you know how that goes after the next break. And have a good day, keep standing, share the Constitution, study your rights, quit being a that, sheep. Uh, statue over there called the Promised Land is a father, mother, they got a rifle in hand and a child, a child with the Bible. They do, yes. So you've, have you taken a little bit I have. Uh, we, yeah, I, I stood over there for like 20 yeah. some days. That, wow. We're down here live in front of the courthouse. It's, uh, we just got about 10, 12 minutes here to give you an update. I'll give you a quick update of this morning's happenings, and then um, oh, we got a couple special guests here today again. So um, uh, Ryan Bundy took the stand this morning. He was the main uh, uh, featured speaker this morning. We had a couple others afterwards, but Ryan Bundy really hit it on the head today with uh, all of his words. He did try to bring in Article Six, and. Um, they shut him down, objected to him twice. He did uh, get a speak on it, but uh, they would not allow him to bring the Constitution into his his uh, closing arguments today. They just shut him totally down. It's a shame that our Constitution is not part of our law system, our court systems anymore, to be able to be heard by the jurors. But tonight I will, um, after court, sometimes 5, 5.30, I'll give you a full update on all court happenings today. David Fry's um, lawyer gave him a representation today, and so did Shauna Cox's standby counsel gave her a representation. So those three have been the ones before lunch, and uh, like I said, um, Ryan Bundy's was the was just awesome today. He he did really well on the stand, um, given his closing arguments. I've got Bruce Cuff uh, running for governor. He's here today, and I've also got. Um, um, Aaron Hour. Yes. These two brothers are good, two Christian brothers from Oregon. They're both running for governor here in the state of Oregon. And I'm going to turn the camera around and 
We're going to let them talk just a moment here, too. How you doing, Brother Bruce? Hey, good. Well, I'm, I'm not running for governor right now. I lost a Republican primary. So, okay. So uh, uh, my brother here, Aaron Orr, he's, uh, he's uh, running under the Constitutional Party uh, for governor. Good man. So, What do you think about the trial so far that you've well, seen? I, I think the trial it is going to have wide-ranging implications for uh, states' rights issues, land rights issues. You know, we can't forget the Hammonds. The Hammonds were the ones that we were here. Uh, these guys showed up to try to draw attention to, to um, just the the sheer uh, corruption, and tyranny of the government, oh, yeah, isn't the it? Yeah, tyranny of the government, sending them back to jail after they'd served already one time. And you know, it's all about their land. It's all about, and that's why these guys took over the refuge. The refuge is the port is the is the point where they were trying to get their land to add to that refuge. So that's why these guys focused on that. Not to mention, um, you know, the buildings that the refuge is actually on. There's questions whether they hold that title legally. That's what Ammon was here. That's why he picked that specific spot as well. So there's a lot of reasons why that that. Uh, they chose this particular place to make a stand, and um, I think we're going to find out today after it's all over that these guys are not guilty. You know, I pray they're they're going to be able to get to go home to their families, and I believe that you know um, even the Bundy case, the 2014 uh, Bundy Ranch thing. I mean, they don't have any evidence for that either. I mean, so. The, the weak performance here by the folks that are prosecuting this case, it's going to come out and they're going to show that they don't have any proof. And the same things, I believe, you know, I just pray to God that the truth's going to come out in this other case that uh, they have no proof uh, for the 2014. And these guys will be able to get to go back to be with their families. And, and, and America will start changing where we realize that our natural resources need to be managed by our the counties need the states need to have control of this property and the counties need to manage it for the use of their citizens that's yes, where we need to exactly. be exactly yes, absolutely here's governor uh, uh candidate governor uh, Aaron, Aaron Hour. Hour, man of the hour yes <laughs> and, and just to show just to prove it here that we are on the ballot uh currently here uh, state voters pamphlet general election november 8 2016 in the year of our lord and you can see here on, I believe, page uh, 26, uh, I'm the constitutional, the Constitution Party nominee. And you can see right there, I'm not ashamed of what I am, a circuit riding minister of the gospel. <laughs> I'm a preacher, and we're, we're thankful for the preaching statesmen uh, that uh, established this great state. You see, I've been telling the story about the development and roots and foundation of Oregon which includes the whole Pacific Northwest. And Jason Lee, Oregon's first missionary, came because of the Native American's quest for the Book of Heaven, meaning uh, walk 3,000 miles to find the book, the scripture, the Word of God. See, I got my Bible with me, open carry, you see. <laughs> and, and they sought for the book. Well, the nation heard about this and identified it as the Macedonian call of the West, and they handpicked the nation's finest, Jason Lee and thrust him out here and Jason Lee established the Oregon Mission with the uh, Indian children which out of that Oregon Mission became Willamette University. So the educational roots and even the forming of the provisional government, their, their first vote at Shampoo in 1843, Jason Lee was the uh, committee leader uh, and those ministers there when they brought in the first organic law of the provisional government. So with the spiritual roots, the educational roots and the uh, governmental roots, that is the identity of Oregon. We are rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's, it's fully documented. We have evidence. We have the Jason Lee statue, the Circuit Rider statue. And that's why there's an attempt of our state legislature over the last four years running, beginning in 2013, to remove Jason Lee from his rightful place in Statuary Hall. You can see these... Uh, with an emergency clause. Let me read you what these emergency clause reads. This 2016 act being necessary for the immediate preservation of the public peace, health, and safety and emergency is declared to exist. Now, what emergency is there? I've got a question. What emergency is there because we have righteous roots and a godly preaching statesman, Jason Lee, to represent 
Oregon to, to the nation for all time. Thank God to honor all other men and women, but not to replace our heritage. So this attempt has been ongoing, as I said, four years running, and they want another statue, Mark Hatfield, to replace Jason Lee statue. Well, and that has can, something to do with this courthouse, this right? This courthouse is named Mark O. Hatfield, United the, States Courthouse. The courthouse where the Bundys are being tried right yes. now. And that's uh, yes. kind of ironic what's going on right now with land grabs and stuff and his name being on that. Because uh, from what I was told that he was responsible, Mark Hatfield, for more Oregon state land and resources to be turned over to the federal government. See, that's why here you see here reviving our state sovereign rights. We've got to understand we have state sovereign rule and this land and resources belongs to the good citizens of Oregon, not the federal government. And so I ask the question, how can it be? How can all this be going on with the Constitution not being allowed in this courtroom this very and you hour? you got to witness that today. I've witnessed that today. You, you yeah. testified yep. as an honest report that their uh, Article 4... Section Art 6 yep. uh, was not allowed to be spoken, or any uh, article or section. Now, what is, I'm asking you, what is that? Could that be, is that possible that it could be treason, according to the United States and Oregon State Constitution? So anyway, we're, we're thankful for the opportunity to share here a little bit and uh, continue to pray, because in the end, I love that scripture, Psalm 22:28. It reads, for the kingdom is the Lord's, for he is the governor among the nations. That's right. And there is going to be a day when the Lord cometh back with ten thousands of his saints, according to Jude, to execute judgment. So let's get it right now. Let's judge. That's the highest form of governing right now is, is us and the Lord, then our family, our home, the jurisdiction thereof, then the community and the county and the state, then the federal government. And then no UN at all. Can you say amen? Amen. To that? And if we get back to that, you know, we will have our country back. We will for have. sure. If that's what if, if it's founded on that, we yes. will get our country back. We will. And so I'm on the ballot running with with what saith the scripture, what saith the constitution. Uh, so get the word out. We have time. And I just wanted to again thank uh, uh, dear brother Bruce Cuff because uh, you know we we're both making effort to take our state back for the Lord. And uh, we pray for each other. We love each other. Where, where is it you find two candidates for governor that are at peace with each other, uh, with, a, with sincere hearts? I so. want to get I want to get Roger in on this just for a second for the picture yes. before I close. Roger is also a former candidate for governor. Oh, he is for the well, state of Oregon. So we've got all three of them here, three three candidates for governor wow. right here in the same place on the same team. <laughs> so that's pretty awesome. The Lord's doing mighty things. We'll have another update again tonight about 5.30, guys. We've got to rush back to court. Hate to leave, but uh, thanks for listening, and we'll Thank be back you. here tonight. God bless you all. Aaron Hour, man of the hour. Praise Good God. evening here, everybody. Um, it's dark down here in front of the courthouse. We're all outside now. They've got the courthouse locked up. Uh, they was just waiting for us to, to get out tonight. Uh, it was a long day. Um, we got everything accomplished that the government want to, wanted to have accomplished today. We had um, the remaining six defendants and their attorneys. They um, all got their closing arguments today, and the government finished up with the final closing argument just a little bit ago. Tomorrow morning, we're going to have an hour or so instructions to the juror, to the jurors, and then it they turn it over to the jurors and the jurors will be in deliberation starting tomorrow this will go um, on until they're done so I guess um, I got a lot of notes I probably won't be able to get them all in today but um, it uh, I'll try to get everything I can here try to sum it up so as I mentioned at lunch Ryan Bundy took the stand first thing this morning took him a little over an hour to um, do his closing arguments. He he done he done awesome. He started out just a little bit slow. You can tell he was a little nervous, but by the time it was done, he was representing himself very well. And um, he represented himself that showing how he did not um, commit conspiracy as they're charging and these gun charges that they've charged him with. It. Um, 
See you later. <laughs> okay, see ya. So everybody's taking off down here. That was uh, Jeanette Finnicum and Carol Bundy. It was awesome to have them here today. Hi to all my haters out there. Love you. Mwah. Trying to give them an update here. I'm, I'm slow. I'm, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> so I'm it, was a long day. it was a long it day. It was a long day. And, and prosecution, man, they, he didn't pull out any stops at the end of the day. Gabriel, he was agitated. He was angry. He was uh, ready to send everybody off to prison for the rest of their lives including women and children I think by the end of the day but isn't that what they all do I think the hardest part for me with Gabriel is that everything he describes these guys doing is what I had to go through just to get into the courthouse today I had armed guards I had security I had to go through surveillance everything that these men did at the refuge that they're using against them now even though they're saying the public who came said it was not an intimidating environment. So the only ones intimidated were the tyrannical government. That's the only ones who were intimidated. So at the end of the day, the government wins because they have more guns and a, a, you know they can ambush people on, on back roads with no cell service. That's why they win. Um, you know, I felt intimidated today. I had tasers all around me. There were weapons. There was um, handcuffs. Um, I got talked to again today. <laughs> Because I smiled too much when Schindler was giving his testimony. They pulled me out because they said, you're smiling too much and it's distracting the jury. The jury couldn't even see me from where I was sitting in the courtroom. Um, so it, it's, just a, it's just a total joke. And um, yeah, I felt very intimidated today. People conspired to keep me out of a federal building. Had I not had my identification, they would have made me leave. And um, Gabriel stood there and said, had it been a fish and wildlife employee, you um, you guys would not have let them in and even though that's not even correct here they can conspire to keep me out of a building or anybody else for that matter who doesn't comply and it's completely okay because we're the stupid American people who pay their their bills we're not um, you know we're not the federal government we're not the elite we're not the king's people so uh, yeah everything he described about the refuge all I could think of is that's everything we witnessed here today just to get into this courtroom and he talked about the armed guards all around and how that's proof they impeded and I'm looking around at armed guards all the way around the courtroom but again kings people versus peasants yep and 13 today room 13 um, they cleared the whole courtroom made us miss about 30 to 40 minutes of the court trial because somebody was eating skittles and they, so they cleared the whole courtroom, they made us leave, they searched each and every individual person to make sure we didn't have candy on us, Skittles, M&Ms. Are you kidding Yes, me? they, they cleared that. the whole courtroom for that. And um, we're, we're, we was unarmed. We were just, we wasn't armed. The only people that were the tyrants again were the people that was in the court. Uh, we're not even in the main courtroom. 13 is only a TV monitor. So it's it's totally wrong. I'm just looking at your comments. Totally wrong. It's um, how they cleared us, and there was Schindler was uh, up giving the closing arguments. We got to miss about thirty minutes of that, or a little bit more. Of Schindler. Of Schindler. Oh my gosh! I didn't. So I didn't even take notes on Schindler's. He totally killed it, knocked it out of the park. Um, I think some people in here are going to go commit crimes just so that they can hire Schindler. <laughs> even some of the trolls, they were just like, oh my gosh, that guy just totally killed it. He, he was absolutely amazing, and I decided that I wasn't going to take notes because I didn't want to do a disservice to uh, how incredibly awesome he did and the, pr the points that he proved. He, as an attorney, said that he, he is intimidated at the very presence of the building that he stands in every day when he has to come to federal court. He said, look around at the power in this building. Just look at it. This is a strong government that we are up against, and it's incredibly intimidating. It's a very powerful system that we're fighting here, and not everybody has the courage to fight it like Ammon Bundy did and be principled. And now, it's, now a, it's in the jury's hands. And but the, yeah, Schindler did awesome. It was the first really. time. No, no, it's the first time he did the. Um, <laughs> it was the first time that he said he ever represented the Constitution. Yep. And he no. tried to uh, bring up the Constitution a little bit. But that was awesome. He said everyone he has ever representative, represented has never had the constitutional rights. Like he, he didn't even know the Constitution. 20 years yeah. of being a lawyer, and he never had the Constitution brought up this way. And he said this Constitution was for these guys. Yeah. This is what it was for. He told me the other day also that he's never, ever represented 
someone here in this federal court building the last 20 years that had God. He said 0% is how he said it. And he said this is the first time that he has actually represented someone that believed in God the way these men did. He said he was proud to be a part of this team. He represented every single person, all, all seven defendants. Yep, he did. He did awesome. Some of the attorneys focused more just on their defendant, but he covered them all. So did Mumford. David Fry's attorney did, did, did okay for David Fry, but he mainly concentrated just on David Fry. And he was trying to show where David Fry was not part of this and how he came in late, which was which was good. It was a good good representation of David Fry, but Mumford represented every single party in the defendants. Um, Schindler did. Uh, also, um, um, uh, David uh, Jeff Banta, his attorney, represented everybody, and he brought up the Constitution. The Constitution was struck down every single time one of them got tried to read it today. They would not let it be a part of this trial, not even in the closing arguments, which was pretty t bad to me. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why they wouldn't even let it be read in court at all. He couldn't even just open it and read, you know, read a few lines from it. it, Could, it it's nope. not allowed. Can't even read a few lines out of it. Overall today, I am very pleased with what I've seen. I think the prosecution stumbled through their stuff. They was obviously nervous. They was upset and aggravated of listening to close to um, nine, ten hours total from yesterday and the day of closing arguments from the defense. Your birthday is this Sunday? Um, I think so. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, it, it, I, I'm seeing seeing God work in this, and I, I really think we're going to get a not guilty verdict out of these jurors. It's... Um, there is no evidence in here. The defense team proved it today, and um, we're going to get to see this. We won't get a verdict till next week. I or, know, or later, or later. So it won't won't be any time just immediately. Not this week at all. But um, I'm going to go through my notes a little better tonight and tomorrow. I'll do a live stream and actually go through a bunch of important things that I think that were that were good to bring up. So tomorrow at noon. I'll do another another live stream from home because he's going to stay home from with home. his family. That's right. <laughs> so the so. the jury will meet tomorrow morning and then they'll go and take all their evidence and go start deliberating. And then uh, the other some of the other attorneys said that um, it's more more than likely it's going to be a hung jury. It seems like the ones that we have we have, but the ones that we don't we clearly don't. And uh, it's not likely that some of them are going to change just because of somebody else's um, information that they provide. So our bet is a hung jury and then an acquittal because, uh, or a, I'm sorry, the prosecution dropping the charges. Because with the hung jury, we have to go through this all over again. And uh, that means that Ammon and Ryan will not be able to get off to Nevada to face the charges there and they will end up holding up the February case. So our guess is that they'll drop all the charges. Um, I don't think that would mean they have to drop the charges for the February group, but um, that, that's our best guess at, at this point. So, well, thanks a lot for joining us and uh, tomorrow at noon, I'll give you a better detailed version of what's happened the last couple of days. Thanks a lot and good night.